Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to explore what really, really old pythons were like, and we're going to take a little time travel back to 1991 and look at the very first implementation of Python. Uh, so let's jump into it. Okay, so I have collected a bunch of what I am referring to as ancient pythons uh, on GitHub, and so you can get to those at github.com slash acetilly slash ancient pythons. Um, and I have found, tracked down, and found the sources from Python 091 and you know up until Python 2.0. Um, and we're going to be taking a look at 091 today, as well as um, some code that I wrote during Advent of Code 2019 to write a single source piece of code that worked all the way from Python 0 up until Python 3.9 at the time, I think it was. Um, kind of a, a jab to be like, oh yeah, Python 2 and 3 isn't all that hard. I can make some code that works all the way in Python 0. And it wasn't easy, and I'll show you a few reasons for that in a second. Um, but first, I needed to make one modification to the original sources in order for them to build on modern Python. And um, that was due to a faulty uh, overflow check for integers. I just removed the overflow check. I could have actually fixed it. But you know, if you're, if you're somehow using Python 091 from the sources that I've provided here, don't overflow integers because you'll just have weird undefined behavior. Um, but this was some some trick that worked in older compilers, but you know didn't work in modern compilers. I find it really strange that this is indented with eight spaces. What is what an interesting uh, indentation! I thought this was tabs, but no, it's spaces. Uh, but anyway, that's the one patch that I had to make. Um, beyond that, if we build this, make o nine x python o dot nine dot one. Um, we build this. It actually builds very, very quickly. <laughs> less less than two seconds build Python, which is kind of crazy. Uh, but then we can run Python 0.9.1, and it works a lot like existing Python, although there wasn't an OS model. What were the modules available then? I feel like there weren't many. Uh, like there wasn't OS.path, for instance. These are the modules that are available. Maybe there is a path in here. There is... I don't know what list win is. There's Mac paths. There's got to be POSIX path, right? Path? Import path. Path.join to and bar. Um, oh, yes. And the first thing that you'll notice is Python 0 does not allow double quoted strings. So you can only have single quoted strings. Double quoted strings are a parse and syntax there. So if, if you want the true answer to should I use single quotes or double quotes, just be like, oh, well, in Python 0, there weren't double quotes. Double quotes are newer than single quotes. Um, and I guess you could use that argument in either direction, but I prefer single quotes. But anyway, it mostly works like you would expect um, Python to work. You know, you have an interactive interpreter. The, uh, did we actually get path.join to work? Path.join uh, does not work. Do we have the dir? Oh, we do have dir. Okay, so there is path.exists is dir. There was no join at the time, so you could you would have to do that. Oh, maybe cat? What does path.cat do? Uh, unpack non-tuple. Uh, apparently cat is supposed to take two things. Maybe this is what became join. Uh, all right, <laughs> and I don't have readline set up, so this is actually I don't think readline was implemented back then. Oh yeah, so path.cat is path.join. But anyway, there were some some basic uh, functions back then, but not too many. Uh, you'll see, like the string module is one of the few that lived on until modern Python. Um, you know, there's a top level util module, which is interesting. Um, this eventually went away. This eventually, I mean, most of these went away. Oh, we have a dis model, so we can, in theory, use the disassembler. Uh, I don't know what that does. <laughs> uh, it disassembled something. I don't know what it is, but you know the the dis module lived on. But I took it upon myself to uh, challenge myself to rewrite some code that I wrote for Advent of Code in Python 3. So this is the original typed Python 3 code. 
Um, and I wanted a way to convert this code to work in Python 0. And I ran into a few interesting things along the way. So, you know, of course, the first that I ran into was that, uh, you know, single quote, double quote thing. Another interesting thing about Python 0 is it does not have an equals equals operator. The uh, equals equals operator is actually a single equals. Um, of course, you can only do that inside of an if statement. So if you do x equals 1, if x equals 2, uh, got 2. Uh, so that obviously doesn't work. If I do if x equals 1, that works. Uh, but x double equals does not work. There's, that's a syntax error. And the does not equal operator was also bang equals. So if we do x does not equal, well, it's, it's not bang equals. <laughs> you see, this is a syntax error as well. And the operator was actually this less than or greater than operator. Um, so that was, that was another quirk. So I basically couldn't use does not equal and I couldn't use equals equals, which very much constrains what I'm able to use. Now I did find a, a tricky way around the equality operator, and that is to use, um, here's an example. Yeah, so here's an example where I was trying to figure out whether a file name was passed to produce a usage. Um, I, I used greater than two and less than two, and or. This is a way to say that um, the length of sys.argv does not equal to. So I was uh, <laughs> combining operations a little bit, and this worked fine. Um, but there's a surprising amount of stuff that existed in Python, you know, Python 1 or Python 0. So like we had the math module, we had the sys module, so I was able to use some uh, neat stuff like that. Uh, there was string.a2i, which could parse a integer from a string. Um, but it didn't work in every single version of Python, so I avoided it here and wrote my own version of uh, A2i, a, a trick using the integer of the zero character and multiplying by 10 in a loop, basically building up a number based on each character. Of course, there's no error handling here. You just assume that it always worked. Uh, here is my equality check for characters, because uh, again, I can't use equals equals. And I don't think strings have equality in the old version either. Oh, actually, how would we do that? If f equals f. Oh, I guess I could have used, oh, well, we can't use equality, but I guess strings do have equality. I wonder if, well, maybe that's characters. Okay, I could have used that, I guess, but. <laughs> Um, I guess I wrote a character equal instead. Oh, that's right, because I was using a, I was writing my own string index function because this was not implemented at all. So I needed a way to find whether uh, some string or find the index of some string and some other strings. This is a very bad implementation of index of, um, but it works. It's a little bit verbose because again, like I can't use nice things like equality and um, yeah, there, I don't think there was range in here either. There was range. Interesting. Um, is there X range? Probably not. That was added in can Python 2. Um, I guess I could have used range, but I did a while loop instead. <laughs> um, you know, had to implement my own is space function, had to implement my own strip. This was not available in all the versions of Python. Uh, but you can see that like these are fairly readable functions, and I was able to build up a library of string functions and use those to do my entire parsing and then implement the algorithm that was needed for day 14 of, of 2019. Um, oh, there's also not dictionary literals. Is that true? Yeah, so there's there was no way to build a dictionary literal. You had to assign it and then add the keys one by one. B equals two. Um, so even though there's this representation that gets printed out, you can't turn around and then reuse it because that was not valid syntax. So you can see I had to you know, build up a dictionary part one part at a time. Uh, there was no negative indices. We covered that somewhere. No, here we go. So I there's no negative indices, so I had to use len minus one. Uh, the open function doesn't have a default mode, so I had to pass R in. Uh, there's obviously no width statement that was added in Python 2.5 or something, uh, but there was try finally, so I was able to, you know, still correctly open and close a file uh, without leaking the file descriptor. Um, but for the most part, this was pretty easy. 
to be honest. Like Python one was or Python zero was not that hard. Like it was a fair it's fairly good programming language. And I think that's why Python has stood the test of time. Like the initial implementation was, you know, straightforward, easy, and worked fairly well. Uh no note if you're trying these out yourselves, um they are fairly buggy. Like I've I've <laughs> kind of avoided some of the uh worst parts of them. Uh, some of the versions of Python just seg fault if you do the wrong thing and you know there's there's lots of bugs. But I don't know, for 20 year old software 30 30 year old shit. <laughs> for 30 year old software, uh, it works fairly well. Uh, but anyway, that's Python Zero. Hopefully you found this interesting. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one.